Hello, welcome to this fourth video in this series on double integrals in polar. In the first video, we just laid down the groundwork, like why things work the way they do. Why is there an R in the integral when there wasn't in, in X and Y Cartesian? It's because of the Jacobian. And then in the video after that, we did a couple basic examples. And then uh, in the previous video to this one, we did a, a difficult example. And then we introduced the idea of area in polar. So this this in this video, what we're going to do is look at two more examples of area in polar. This question here, number five says, example five says, find the area in the first quadrant inside both the circle R equals two cosine theta and the circle R equals one. Uh, the circle R equals one showed up in our previous uh, examples one and two. And then just an example of three, the uh, R equals two cosine theta shows up, showed up. So these are the drawings of these guys. Uh, R equals one is in red and R equals two cosine theta is in blue. All right, we're interested in the area in the first quadrant that is inside of both. So that's the yellow shaded area there. Our job, find the area of that region. But to do that, we're gonna have to figure out the bounds. We know what the integrand is, what goes on the inside, it's just a one and then R, D, R, D, theta. And so, we have to figure out what goes, uh, what are the bounds. So we come radially outward from the origin. We draw little circles on the end because they represent the upper limit inside and the lower limit inside. And so the lower limit inside is gonna be zero. The upper limit inside has an issue. It seems to be fine. It's on the circle R equals one, but wait, if you continue this out, it switches over to the circle R equals two cosine theta. Okay, so it's going to require two double integrals. Where does it do this? Where does it, where does it, uh, where does it execute the switch at? Where does, where does the switch happen? It's at this intersection between the two curves. At that intersection between the two curves, we have to figure out what's the theta because theta starts at zero and theta stops at that place and then we have to start back up for the second double integral start at that place and end it looks like it's going to be pi over two so what's going on at the intersection there is that the two circles are equal to each other two cosine theta is equal to one solving that you'll get cosine theta as a half and that's have to ha that has to happen at pi over three 60 degrees so on the next slide, we'll go set up our double integral, our two double integrals. Uh, the first one having a much larger area than the second one. Uh, the first one going from zero to one on the inside, while the second one goes from zero to two cosine theta on the inside. There's another drawing with some different shading there. So the first one, the lime, the lime green, uh, the inside integral goes from zero to one and the theta goes from zero to pi over three. And then the the, uh, the cyan color, the blue color there, the highlighter blue color, then uh, the theta starts up at pi over three and it ends at pi over two. And then your upper limit on the inside is the blue circle, which is two cosine theta. It's not undoable to do a integral with, you know, to, to do two double integrals. And so uh, they're both doable. Most times you try to avoid it if you can, but we can't avoid it here. So let's do it. Uh, the first integral is straightforward. It's numerical bounds. Uh, R squared over two is the inside. So that's going to be straightforward. We got to we'll put in the one. It's going to be all numerical. Second integral has a little bit of a problem. Uh, it gives the same R squared over two, of course, but uh, we have to put in two cosine theta. And so we have to square that. It's, it's okay. It's like going to be, you know, cosine squared. And we know what to do with that. Just, just, you know, remember that. Um, <clears throat> the uh, move back over to the left again. We have a half, okay, minus nothing, so a half. And then on the right, it's gonna be four cosine squared, but then it's divided by two, so two cosine squared, and then you put a zero in, you get a zero. All right, great. Uh, the first integral again is just gonna be, uh, in this case, a uh, half of theta, and you put the pi over three in, you put the zero in. But for this second integral here, we're going to need at this point to replace the cosine squared with the half angle identity. 
whenever you're integrating powers of sines and cosines and there is no odd power present and there's only even, you replace the even power with the half angle identity, cosine squared theta is equal to one half, one plus the cosine of double theta. If it's already twice theta, then here you double that and you get four theta. The two and a half, they cancel. You're just integrating one plus cosine of two theta. Um, and integrating the first one, we got the theta. We put in the pi over three. There's the half outside. So the first one's pi over six. And then the second integral, we can continue working with uh, the two and a half, cancel each other out. <clears throat> integrating that second integral there, we're going to end up with theta plus a half of the sine of twice theta, which we are to put a pi over two in <clears throat> and then a pi over three in. The, uh, the pi over two gives us only the pi over two because of the sine of double that is a zero. Um, and then we'll have the pi over three and then the sine of double pi over three. That's the sine of 120. The sine of that is a root three over two. Yeah. And so it's times a half. So it's root three over four. Um, as far as the pi over six plus the pi over two minus the pi over three. Oh, wait, that might be wrong. Actually. Pi over six plus I guess I think that's another pi over six. So that's right. That's right. That's pi over three. That's pi over three. Uh, and then minus three rad. Uh, I'm sorry, rad three over four. All right. So that's example one. I'm sorry, example five. That's our first example for this video. Finding area between curves uh, or fi finding area in polar. In this case, the area inside two different curves. Polar curves, though. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can fit the other one in in 10 minutes. We'll see. Uh, we have uh, R equals one. And R equals 1 minus cosine theta. This was the, the drawing that we had when we were explaining how um, RD, RD theta works. And so um, I put this one in purposely because the, the lower bound is not 0. In most all the other integrals we've done, the lower bound has been 0 on the inside. Here, that's not going to be the case. Uh, the upper bound on the inside is going to be, you know, R equals 1. The lower bound on the inside is going to be this cardioid. That's the cardioid 1 minus cosine theta. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, what about theta? Theta starts at zero and it's what you would think. Theta is done at pi over two. Okay. And so uh, R squared over two, we got to put a one in and a one minus cosine theta in. Let's pull the half out. Let's pull the half all the way out even. And then you put the upper limit in and you just get a one and then you have to square one minus cosine theta. So I've already squared it out here for you. And then we can cancel out the ones. Don't forget though, we have to apply that negative there. So it's gonna be two cosine theta minus cosine squared. Oh, no, minus. Okay, should we fix on the fly? Let's fix on the fly, sorry about that. That's a minus. Uh, let's change it to red maybe. We'll fix on the fly there, sorry about that. Okay, we put in the uh, half angle identity for that guy with the minus. And then we'll um, distribute that across. So we get half, or negative a half, and then plus. Oh, why is this only a one? Yeah, that makes, oh, it there's lots of mistakes here. Lots of mistakes here. Sorry about that. This guy should be negative a half and then my, uh, plus plus half of cosine two theta. And we integrate. So we get uh, two sine theta as the antiderivative of the first one, uh, minus half theta as the integral of the second one. And uh, plus a fourth of a uh, plus a fourth of sine of two theta as the integral of the third term. Uh, put the power of a two in, and um, sine of power of two is a one, so you get a two there. And then we're going to get minus pi over four. But I think everything else zeroes out. Zeroes, yeah, everything else zeroes out. So this is going to be a minus pi over four. Sorry about that. So the final answer is uh, one minus pi over eight. Wow, that one little negative 
propagated all throughout the problem. All right, great. I'll fix that. I'll, I'll type it up. But anyway, there you go. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm trying to help you through this multivariable calculus journey. Often you can make mistakes, so I'm here to help you through these mistakes. Um, please reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, comment down below, like and subscribe, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.